Hello everybody and welcome to this brand new video of mine. Today we're going to talk about Prologis or Prologis, depending on how you want to say. This is the investor presentation of October 2021 and Prologis is the biggest landlord of commercial real estate, especially real estate in the logistics area, like one of these fulfillment centers. You can see here where the trucks arrive, then they get unloaded, and then another truck is getting loaded with all kinds of goods, and then they send that basically all of the globe. So what we can see here are market and billing characteristics and matters. So we can see that the majority or the net effective rent within the last five years has been coastal and non-coastal real estate hasn't been that requested. If we go on we can see that the superior location strategy kind of works for them because we can see that the majority of assets under management are located in the US, Mexico and Canada followed by Europe with 19% of total assets under management followed by Asia, I think Asia is just Japan and China, and then followed by Brazil, a power of a 20 year development track market. So, investments in total, we have 10 billion in the US, and outside of the US, we have 26 billion. We have, I think it's square foot, 152 million in the US, and outside of the US, 309 million. Then, value creation is also. 2.7 billion in the US and then 6.2 billion outside of the US and the margin of let's say 24.5% globally. And what makes their development program so unique? And this is the ability to source the highest risk adjusted returns across 15 countries and uh, 19 countries. I love that fact because you are, or not you, but this company is kind of diversified through the globe. Like they're operating in different countries. So if there's a let's say economic downturn in one of the countries and they still got the other countries to work or perform. Durability of value creation from global footprint, yeah, basically what I've just said. Future ready land portfolio. So location in the global markets that matter. And we can see that all the dots they have in is basically areas where they are invested. This is probably more like total expected investment. So land portfolio. So we can see they expect to invest over 11 billion. The other thing is then we have covered land and as we can see right down covered land are acquisitions of income generating assets with the intention to be redeveloped and being used better. So we can see that this is around 5.1 billion optioned land. I assume this is something where the where Prologus has the opportunity to do something but it's not been secured yet. So the total expected investment is 20 one billion i think it's quite a quite a lot the 2021 development starts with all of those things is at a hundred percent so i assume there are no delays kind of like that and the total estimated build out is 181 million square feet there's kind of the issue because i'm from germany and we don't do square foot i do not really know how much that is um, but I assume it's quite a quite a lot. Yeah. One thing we can see is that they're assuming to invest, I think, the biggest part in Southern California. Then they're doing a lot in Mexico, UK and Japan. So a long-term partner with the world's leading investors. So what we can see here is 202 investors across 17 countries. And Prologus is a significant co-investor. So they have an average ownership of 31%. For example, 30% of the investor type is pensions, then insurance, and then sovereign wealth funds like the one from Norway, I assume. Prepared life ventures produce durable cash flow. That's true. So growth in third party assets under management. Basically, this means they are operating for like they're operating that asset for another company. So I don't know, someone has like a big real estate portfolio worth a billion and Prologus is, is managing it and they get a fee for it and they probably make a hell of a lot of money of that because as we can see the growth of that third party assets under management. So the fee is growing at 26% combined annual growth rate. Then the assets under management are growing at 20% combined annual growth rate and the growth in third party revenue is growing at 20% combined annual growth rate. That's good. That is really good. 
That is really good to be honest. And what we can see is 80% margin on fee related revenues. 80% margin. That is nice. Drivers of long term development value creation. We can see the different areas here like business models, scale and diversification, growth track record. Breadth of greed of opportunity. Well, I'm not totally sure. But scale and diversification. So, for example, nearly 4.5. 3 billion of development stars in 2021 and i think the the issue is that nowadays you need in the whole world you basically need a program that gets infrastructure that's been crumbling for many years going on again and i think prologus takes a part in that with an investment like that and then another thing is their track record. So in the 20 year history, they've been building more square feet than all other US logistic reads combined. That's nice, isn't it? So guys, from here, let's just jump straight into TradingView and MarketWatch after that. So here we are at TradingView and we can see long term monthly chart. That's been a nice performance over time. So from 97 to here, we had 1600% performance. This is solid. We can see that 2008 has definitely been, let's say, a rather tough year for them. But I mean, it's obvious because they are operating logistics. And if the whole economy has a problem, then, well, they do have a problem too. The only thing that's been nice is that, yeah, you could have bought the asset quite quite cheap again here around ten dollars i would say and then you would have had a lovely performance but all in all i think prologus is a rather stable long-term company to just buy and hold uh, it's a read by the way i haven't made a video about what a read is but i will soon so subscribe so that you won't miss that one because there are a few things you've got to keep an eye on when investing in reads let's just have a look at the daily chart and again prologus isn't it it's doing it all-time high let's just jump straight into market watch we can see we have a dividend yield of 1.72 percent we have a market cap of almost 110 billion 740 million shares outstanding and with 56 a rather high pe ratio to be honest if we go on financials we can see that the sales is growing at a rather solid speed kind of like that so it looks like as if their basic shares are outstanding are increasing over time so it's, it's, i assume they've made some acquisition and paid with shares that definitely might be but i haven't found anything in the investor presentation to that i can't really say for sure let's just have a look at cash flow in a case like prologus funds from operation is the thing you want to keep an eye on because that matters and not the earnings pressure it's funds funds from operation because it's a read but again i'll make a video about that and we can see the funds from operation are definitely increasing quite a lot over time and i kind of like that then capital expenditures also increasing but that's not no problem at all because obviously they've got to kind of fix their real estate and everything and invest so it's all right the next thing is we can see the total cash dividend is definitely covered so 1.7 billion paid in dividends 2.9 billion fund from operation absolutely fine we can also see they're not buying back any stocks so that's all right and uh, free cash flow is also rather high so guys all in all i think prologus is a as i would say rather stable company um, if you have the opportunity to buy it as a certain uh, yield i would definitely recommend doing that uh, i don't know having a company like that with a three or four percent dividend yield is definitely more than fine so um, i'm currently not invested in the company but that has nothing to do with the company not being good i uh, i simply haven't you know like there's never been the case for me to to invest uh, i can't really say why but that's the way it is but i think prologus is one of the shares that's on my watch list so for example if something like that happens again and we just go in seeking alpha so prologus and then we go in dividends so guys here we are at seeking alpha i just want to show you something as we've been able to see here remember that number and uh so in any case there's they're paying out less in dividends than they could so there's definitely potential for dividend growth and 
here, okay, payout ratio is 60%, and we have 1.7% yield nowadays. But if we go on dividend yield, and then we can see back in time, so for example here, if, if something like COVID happens and then you suddenly got a yield of 3% or above 3%, I would definitely uh, consider buying a company like Prologus, but nowadays with the yield of just, what is it, 1.6%, 1.7%, not necessarily. Um, because there are some certain companies where I think you buy them for income, and Prologus is one of them. And there are other ones where the dividend yield is so low that it's it doesn't really matter whether there is a yield at all. Like, for example, Biotechni or um, Thermo Fisher, like you're not buying that company for the yield. But, um, yeah, that's just my opinion. So if something like COVID happens and then, or if any kind of economic recession happen and the market is having a rather tough time and we can see that Prologue is, is doing something like that, giving me the opportunity for you for a free, three and a half, three percent yield, I would definitely consider buying some shares because if we can if you have a look like that uh, over time the yield on time definitely worth it so for example if you bought in 2011 you would have a 10 percent yield on cost because the dividend increased and so on that's nice because over time again prologus will perform we have a look at max yeah so here you can check that out then you 29 Again, in that financial crisis, dude, that's got to be amazing having a 20% yield on cost. So we have a look. Ah, oh, we can't do it here, unfortunately. But yeah, I think you did get the case. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and leave a like, subscribe. Tell me what you think about Prologus, what are your thoughts on the, uh, about the companies. Did you get like the investment case at all that I was describing or not? Uh, what are your thoughts? Would you buy them right now or not? Yeah, let me know and see you soon, guys. Bye.